Hello fellow designers, it's Karen of Karen Gwen Customs and today I'm showing you guys a tutorial on how to create this amazing mermaid tool bottom gown with a mesh and lace halter top using my four yard mermaid gown with Godet pattern. This was a very detailed video showing the ups and downs and everything in between on how to create this gown, so stay tuned. So I'm going to be hacking my mermaid gown with Godet pattern and changing it to a halter top. So I have my uh, top piece here and I'm just going to lay my pattern paper on top of it. I call this pattern paper, it's really um, easel paper from Michaels, um, but this is what I use to trace on my patterns. You can also purchase this from Amazon. Could be called pattern paper, easel paper, banner paper, but it's very useful. Tracing a size medium. All right, so there is my medium pattern piece that I have traced. And then I'm going to take my pattern piece, my original pattern piece and lay it next to this one um, because I want my halter to extend kind of onto the back of the dress um, all the way to the center back. So I'm just going to trace this out all the way to a size medium again. And then I'm going to just draw a diagonal line from this edge all the way up to the neckline. Now, for the neckline, I want my halter to only be about three inches wide. So for my pattern piece, that means I'm going to draw this out from the center one and a half inches. So that's how wide it's going to be. And then from there, I'm just going to start my diagonal line down. all the way down here to that piece. So here is my new pattern piece right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. I'm just gonna label it first. Um, halter top mermaid gown. And cut one on fold in illusion mesh. And my fold is there. So there's that pattern piece. And then I also measured my own neck as well as my mannequin's neck. It was about 13 and a half inches around. Um, so I'm going to make my collar be 11 and a half inches around because you want it to stretch a little bit. And then I'm going to um, make my pattern piece five inches tall because um, I'm going to be doubling it over. I want it to be two inches tall. So you multiply by, that by two, you get four. And then you add an inch for the half inch seam allowance on each side. So you're going to get five inches tall. And then um, for an 11 and a half inch collar, you're going to do your pattern piece at 5.25. No. 5.75 inches wide. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're gonna add a half inch seam allowance, which will take you to 6.25. There's the fold, collar, halter, top, mermaid. 
So I'm just going to cut out my collar real quick. You're cutting it on the fold. Then I'm going to cut out my illusion mesh. So here's my piece of illusion mesh that's going to be used for the halter top. Basically looks like a triangle with a little flat top here. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is measure these sides because this is going to be covered with um, my own homemade elastic bias tape. So I need to know how long it is so I can figure out how long to cut my strips of fabric for that. So this measures 21 and a half inches long. So I'm gonna cut it two inches shorter. So I'm gonna cut it 19 and a half inches long because whenever you do elastic bias, you need to be cutting it shorter so that you have to stretch it out a little bit as you sew. Okay, so I have this strip of fabric laid out here. I'm going to be cutting um, one strip that's four inches wide because each strip needs to be two inches wide. So I'm just gonna cut out a four inch by 19 and a half inch strip. And then I'm gonna cut that in half and my table has markings on it so I can kind of see through the fabric. Um, one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna cut all the way up till I get to 19.5. And now I'm going to fold it over and cut it in half. I'm just gonna get rid of this edge right here. And I'm gonna cut this in half. Now that I have my strips cut out, I'm going to be attaching them to my halter top. So you just want to lay your halter out flat. And then you're going to take your strips, lay it right side down on each side. And you're going to pin it so that the length of the this strip matches up with the length of the halter. So remember the this green strip is a couple inches shorter than the halter. So I'm just going to have to stretch it out as I pin it so that it lines up.
Okay, so I'm gonna sew these down with a zigzag stitch and a half inch seam allowance. So now that you have it sewn down, what you're gonna do is hold it like this. You're going to flip the fabric over like so. And you're gonna flip it in to the center so that the two raw edges meet. And then you're going to flip it in again so that it covers the first side that you did. And you're just going to pin it down like this. You want the edge to be covering the other edge by just a smidget. You're gonna sew this down with a straight stitch. So I'm just gonna fold all of this in. Okay, so I have all of this binding pinned down. I'm gonna go ahead and sew it down with a straight stitch. And I'm gonna be sewing it right at the very edge of the fold, not of the fold, but at the very edge of where the binding meets the mesh because I don't want the, uh, I don't want the stitching to be very visible. I want it right at the edge. So I finished um, sewing it down. So this is how it looks. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is prepare my collar to be um, sewn onto the dress. Fold this in so that I can have a clean hemmed edge and I'm gonna hem it.
Now that my edges are hemmed, I'm going to take my collar with the right side facing up and then I'm just going to fold it over like this. And I'm going to pin it together, right sides together, and then sew it together. And then I will be flipping it right side out. And I'm going to sew it together with a half inch seam allowance and a zigzag stitch. Now that it's sewn together, I'm just going to trim it. And I'm gonna take my loop turner and turn it <clears throat> right side out. There we go. So here's the collar. So now I'm taking my halter top and I have it laid out in front of me with the top of it facing me. And I'm gonna take my collar, find the center, and at the center, I'm going to pin it at the center of the halter with about a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to sew this down using two straight stitches, one straight stitch at the very edge of the mesh and one straight stitch at the very edge of the collar. So I'm sewing this down with a straight stitch at the very edge of the mesh and a straight stitch at the very edge of the collar so there will be two lines. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, something that I should have fixed, um, but I'm not gonna stitch this, I'm not gonna take the stitches out because um, this is going to be covered up with a piece of lace anyway. But um, you can see right here, like more towards this side, I have the seam for the collar down at the bottom, but then on this side, you can see that it's kind of uh, more exposed. Um, so when you're sewing the collar down, make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be covering this up with lace applique anyway, so it's not going to make a difference. Okay, so here is my halter top. 
And now I'm gonna get ready to sew these skirt pieces together so that I can attach this and it can be a dress. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay out the material for the skirt. And I have four yards of this stretch velvet that I ordered by accident that was supposed to be milliskin. So I'm just using it to make a sample. What you're gonna do is take your fabric lengthwise and fold it in half. I did cut some off of here, so. Then once you have it in half lengthwise, you're going to take it and fold it over this way, widthwise. So you have four layers of fabric. And make sure all the edges are lined up. All right, so this part over here is my fold and I'm gonna lay my skirt pattern down. On the fold. the day piece down as well. Now when it comes to your bidet piece, you need to cut it out at the same time as you're cutting out your skirt piece to make sure you have enough space because um, you pretty much need to get them laying as close to each other as possible. if you want to stay within your four yard allowance. And remember, I'm doing a size medium, so I'm gonna try not to cut my pattern. I'm basically just going to try to fold it back as I go to cut it out. Um, another thing you can do is if you bought the digital copy, you can just print out multiple copies and have one of each side, or you can get some pattern paper and just trace it, whichever you prefer. But I'm just going to try to preserve this piece as is. Are those two pieces and then cut your good day piece out you're gonna have four of these because remember you doubled your fabric twice Forgot to add. Forgot to add. Do 
not forget to take one layer. Take one layer. <laughs> take one layer of your skirt piece that you have down here. If you want to just um, pull that out, that would be safer. But while you still have this folded, you're going to actually cut one of them in half. So that you have two symmetrical pieces and it will allow you space to insert a zipper. Okay, first thing I'm going to do for the bottom part of this dress is to sew my godets together. Remember, I have four of these triangular pieces. So, I'm just going to take a pair, pin them right sides together. And as you can see, I cut them um, with this uh, edging on it. So, I'm just going to pin them together. And I'll use that edging as my seam allowance because all that needs to be cut off and not visible on the dress. and so I'm now sewing my godets together with a zigzag stitch and typically I would use little to no seam allowance but I do have this uh, edging here so I'm going to get rid of that so that'll be my seam allowance Now, some type of error happened with me cutting that this piece is shorter than this piece, but if that happens, don't worry about it. We'll even it out when we hem the bottom. So here is my good day. You can see it's just pretty much a large triangle and we're going to be sewing this into the side seams of the dress. Okay, so I'm about to thread my serger so that I can serge the, uh, um, the seams of my dress. Um, I'm going to only be using three threads because I only have one needle in my machine. If you look here, you can see that I only have the right needle inserted. I don't have the left needle in um, just because... You really don't have to have four threads. Three threads will do the job as well and you will use less thread, so why not? So I have these three spools of serger thread. One is a dark green, but the only thread that really matters is what's on the needle. So these two um, spools over here are not actually going to be on the needle. So I'm just using this dark green because that's what's available right now. So the first thing you do on the spool, Second from the right, you sit your thread down. You're going to put it from back to front through this hole up here. And then you're going to bring it through this little silver metal thing here. You're going to put your finger down on this little white tab and bring it down. That is releasing the tension so it's easy to slide through. Now, you're gonna bring it down through there and once you are down in there, you're going to pull the thread through this little hook here 
on the brothers 1034d is hooked is labeled with a five okay you pull your thread through there and then you put your thread only through this first one here this first silver hook here then you bring it back up through this hook labeled number seven then you bring it through this thing here is this thing right here there's a little hole you're gonna stick your thread through that hole Stick your thread through that hole. Once it's through there, you can pull it through with your finger or you can pull it through with your tweezers. And your serger should have come with a pair of these. So that one is threaded. That's your first thread. All right, now, your second thread is going to go all the way to the right side. So you're just gonna sit it there, pull it up through this loop, bring it through the little metal thing, push down on the tension button, bring it all the way down. You're gonna bring it down through this loop over here, which is label five, all the way on the right side. Then you're gonna bring it behind both of these metal things right here. You're gonna bring it up to this loop that's labeled with the number eight. Then you see this little thing here with the blue arrow on it? You're gonna pull that all the way out. So it should be in like that. You're gonna pull it out and then Once you pull that out, there's going to be a little hook all the way over here. And you basically have to bring your thread behind that little, it's like a, a tab. And you have to latch your thread behind the little tab. And this is always the most tricky part for me because sometimes it comes undone. Um, but once it goes through there, you're supposed to push this back in. And you're then supposed to bring your thread through this little hole here. And then same thing, once it's through, you can reach back there with some tweezers and bring it all the way back through. There we go, okay. okay. And then, lastly, you're gonna take your last spool and sit it on the second from the left. Push through. Put it through the little metal thing on the top. Put your finger down on the tension. Bring it down. And instead of bringing it down here, you're going to take it over to the left and then bring it up through here. Just following the arrow and then you're going to thread your needle. So you're gonna put the thread behind this little 
uh, middle thing here is kind of similar to what your sewing machine looks like. And then you're just gonna stick the thread through the eye of your needle. And all threads are just going to go in the same direction. Kind of under the presser foot. And then you're going to close your machine. And you're going to put your foot on the pedal and just kind of hold these threads. And it should make a chain. So once you see a chain, then you know you did it right. Thank God, because sometimes it doesn't work and then you have to start all the way over and it's the most annoying thing ever. All right, so that is threading your serger. All right, so now that my serger has been threaded, I'm gonna go ahead and serge my Godet pieces. So I'm just going to take one of the pieces like this. Um, you can see my seam allowance is over here. I'm just going to sit it so that my seam falls like right on the inside of the blade. So basically my needle is just going to be going over that same seam and cutting off all the seam allowance to the right of it. So you can see all the seam allowance has been cut off. Here is my serge inside and you can see that the darker thread actually is on the inside. And once you look on the other side, that's what it looks like, it's beautiful. So I'm now going to pin my Godet, what one of them. I'm gonna pin one of my Godets to the mermaid skirt piece. So I'm just going to lay the skirt out like this, right side up, facing up. And then I'm going to take one of my bidets like this, and I'm going to pin it to the right side of my skirt. So that's that. Then I'm going to take my left skirt piece, or I guess it's the back piece, the right back piece. And I'm gonna lay it down like this. And I'm gonna pin the other good day to it, the other good day to it on the same side. I'm now going to take my skirt front piece and lay it out flat like this. You can see the 
so that is over here and it extends all the way to when it turns this so y'all can see better. You see the go day is over here on this side. And I'm gonna take my other skirt piece. And I'm gonna lay it down over here. And basically, and here's the, no, that's not it. Here is the other skirt piece. So basically, I'm gonna be pinning these to each other. I'm gonna pin this skirt piece down to the front like this. And then where the good day is, the good day will be pinned to the edge of the front skirt piece. And same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna be pinning this piece all the way down that edge as well. Okay, so I have sewn all of the skirt pieces together. So now I have one wide piece with an open back, but basically this is how it's going to look. Okay, so you guys last saw me two days ago when I finished sewing, um, the three pieces to the mermaid skirt together. And when I finished sewing them together, I did what I always do, what I always like to do while I'm sewing, which is I'll stop and hold the fabric up to myself to see what it looks like, make sure the shape looks right and everything. So that's exactly what I did. I held the fabric up to myself and I see these like weird white stripes on the skirt. So I'm like, what is this? So I stopped. I messaged the um, seller from Etsy because I purchased it from Etsy and I asked her, is there anything I can do to get this these lines to go away? And she said, you know, maybe wash it, dry it, which I was already 10 steps ahead of her. I already had thrown it in the washing machine. I washed it twice. I put it in the dryer. The white stripes did not go away. So eventually I'm mad because I spent like $70 on this fabric and like now it's not it's not usable as a prom dress because you can see all these weird stripes. So then she also mentioned something called nap, which I have never heard of. But apparently when you're working with velvet, there's a top and a bottom or like a right way and a wrong way to cut the fabric. So she told me that if I flip the fabric over the other way, I will not see the stripes. Like literally flipping it 180 degrees. And guess what, you guys? She's absolutely right. I cut the fabric upside down, which it really sucks that I didn't know anything about this whole nap thing in different directions because I would have cut it the other way. But at this point, I already have my skirt cut out, sewn together, and I have it the wrong direction. So what I decided to do because I'm not going to give up on this project, things like this happen. I decided to order um, two bolts of mint green tool from Amazon. And they're supposed to be arriving today between uh, 9 and 11. Anyway, once I get it, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take the tool and I'm going to sew it around 
the uh, knee to floor area of the skirt and I'm going to make a different masterpiece. So I think like once I do that, the top part will be, I mean, you can still kind of see the stripes on the top part, but it doesn't look as bad as it going down the whole entire skirt. So that's what I'm gonna be doing and I will keep you guys updated. Um, but while I am waiting on the male lady, I'm just going to go ahead and sew the top to the skirt and just keep that process moving forward so by the time i have my tool i'm ready to go ahead and move on to the okay so i have my skirt laid out in front of me this is the waist of the skirt so here's the center piece and then the two back pieces that are going to be connected by a zipper and then here is my halter top so i'm just going to begin by um pinning the halter top to the skirt, right sides together. And then on the back sides, when I pin this down, I'm going to, um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit wider. See this little small triangular gap right here? It's a little bit wider than the back skirt piece. So I'm just going to move it down a little further till it meets. So that's about an inch of extra fabric down here. See that? And the reason it's doing that is because when I drafted my pattern, I forgot to take out the seam allowance. So if I was to just pin it like right to the, the edge um, without this overlap, then I would have extra space. I didn't need seam allowance because I had one long piece going across the whole body. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this down using a half inch seam allowance and a zigzag stitch. Then once I do that, I'm gonna flip it over and top stitch the green back so that it does not show through the mesh.
All right, so now that this is connected, I'm going to just fold this down. This is my seam allowance. I'm gonna fold it down and top stitch so that there's no chance of this seam allowance showing through on the other side. So all you do is just fold it back and you sew it down using a straight stitch. I usually use um, about a quarter inch seam allowance. See, all I'm doing is just sewing I'm sewing this stuff back. Okay, so now you can see I have my halter top connected to my skirt. It looks pretty neat. And all I'm gonna do on this other side is just trim away this excess mesh so that it looks clean. Looks nice. All right, so now I'm going to insert my zipper and then I'll be sewing the back closed. Then I'll kind of pin it up on the mannequin so y'all can see what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm pinning the zipper in. You can see I just have my dress leg face up and this is the left edge of the dress. So remember we have a halter top. So the back is going to start where the skirt starts. So you take your invisible zipper like this, unzip it, lay it face down. I'm gonna start it right here, like a smidge above the top of the skirt so that it kind of goes onto the uh, the binding of the top of the dress as well. Also, this fabric is four-way stretch. Um, when you are sewing a zipper onto four-way stretch fabric, what can happen is that your fabric stretches out um, while you're sewing it and then it'll cause the zipper to be wavy. So in order to combat that, you need to put something underneath the fabric that is non-stretch. So I'm just going to trim this edge of my illusion mesh and use that. Um, Joanne has something like that called Stay Tape. And it's just basically a non-stretch little strip of like white mesh. But I believe the package is like $8. So if you have something else you can use without um, spending extra money on other stuff, then by all means use it because it's going to be folded back behind the zipper so no one's going to see it anyway. So I'll just use some of this. So this is what I'm going to be using, and this is the stretch, I mean the piece of the um, the mesh that does not stretch. It's the direction that does not stretch. All right, so as I am pinning this, pinning the zipper to the dress, I'm also pinning my um, homemade stay tape underneath the fabric. So to keep my fabric from stretching out as I sew.
this zipper is really not the best match. So as I'm sewing, I'm just going to try to make sure I get it, get the needle as close to the zipper teeth as possible. So it'll be kind of invisible. I mean, it is invisible. It's supposed to be invisible, but depending on how you sew it, sometimes you can see a little bit of the zipper. I'm only going to go down this far because that's eight inches. My waist to hip is eight inches and I don't like my zipper to go any lower than my hip because then you might get this like weird pucker in the butt area. So that's where I'm going to stop pinning it at. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this down. I'm going to change my foot from my regular presser foot to my zipper foot. Here's my zipper foot. See what it looks like underneath. All right, so just take your zipper, pin to the fabric, and I'm gonna see if I can get a close up for you guys. So there's two grooves in the presser foot for the uh, zipper foot. So I just lay my fabric down like this. And when I lower my presser foot, I just make sure that the zipper teeth are caught in that presser foot groove that's on the left side. And you use a straight stitch for this. Just gonna hold my phone so y'all can get a really good close up. So. See how I'm almost just pushing the teeth back? The more the teeth are pushed back, the better, the um, the closer you can get to the teeth. And the closer you are to the teeth, the more invisible your zipper will be. Okay, so I have sewn down this side of the zipper. I'm just gonna zip it back up, make sure it's still functioning. Remember I said, if you can't zip your zipper after you sew it, that means you sew it through the teeth. So it zipped all the way back up, so it's good. As you can see, you cannot see the side of the zipper that's covered by fabric at all. Um, so that means I'm on track to having a really good looking invisible zipper. See, you can't see it like at all. It's perfect. So um, I have it zipped up. So now I'm going to pin it to the other side of the dress. And just want to make sure that the waist seam matches up. Because once I match it, I'm going to pin it down. All right, so I have that pinned. That should be a good match. So I'm gonna unzip this and go ahead and pin the rest of it.
I'm going to be sewing this and I'm gonna sew it in the same direction that I sewed the other. So this time I'm working my way from the bottom back up to the top. I don't know if it's left-handed because there is a groove on both sides of the zipper foot, but I just prefer to use the groove on the left side. So this time I'm sewing from bottom to top. All right, so I just finished sewing the zipper to the other side. Oh, I didn't sew it down far enough. Or maybe, which side did I just do? This side I sewed farther. Okay, let's see. Look how this looks. What zipper? What zipper? It's a seam. It's a seam. What zipper do you see? This is perfect. So now I just have to clean up the little top uh, edging. But I'm very satisfied with how this came out. And... This one I sewed down too far, about an inch and a half, so I'm just going to pick it out with my seam ripper. That's about even now, so now what I'm gonna do is turn this back inside out and I'm going to be sewing the whole entire middle seam of the skirt together so that first begins with um, sewing a little straight stitch like right behind the bottom edge of the zipper so I'm going to pin that little section together. And then I'm going to pin down the entire back of the dress. Okay, so I'm changing my pressure foot back from the zipper foot back to the regular hook. I mean, foot back to the regular foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric. This is where the bottom of the zipper connection ends. 
I'm going to start sewing a straight stitch extremely close to the zipper, kind of up here, maybe like half an inch to an inch above the bottom of the zipper. And then once I get to the bottom of the zipper, I will switch to a zigzag stitch. So I'm close to the bottom edge of the zipper connection now. So as I come down this little curve here to get to the edge of the fabric, I'm gonna switch from a straight stitch to a zigzag stitch. Switching a zigzag. There's the top, I have the collar pin in the back, and then there's the bottom. So here's my mermaid gown. It has so much potential to be a beautiful, just simple mermaid gown, but you can see I have all these stripes at the bottom because I cut the fabric in the wrong direction. Um, it doesn't look terrible, but I don't feel like it's, it's good enough for a prom dress. So I'm going to go ahead and be covering the bottom with the tool that I purchased. And all right, I just got my tool from Amazon. I'm just gonna cut it open real quick. I ordered two bolts. So I ordered two bolts um, and they were like, I think $12.99 or $13 or something a piece. And they are a wonderful match. These are actually like a, a bit of a lighter shade of um, mint than the main color of the velvet is. And that's good because since I have my velvet cut going the wrong direction, it looks like an icy mint. And that's exactly what this tool looks like. And I think it's all going to match together really, really perfectly. There it is. You have your whole bolt of tool. It's 40 yards. Um, so I ordered two bolts. I have a total of 80 yards. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tool like this and I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm just going to like gather it by hand and be sewing it down in like a circular pattern um, and just gathering it every so often. So I'm about to go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to basically spend the morning um, adding the tool. Okay, so I'm starting off with the dress laid out in front of me like this because I'm going to be um, pinning where I want my tool to start. So I was just looking for the knee area, which is here. This is the most narrow part before the dress starts to flare out. And I want it to still be comfortable to walk in. So I probably will be stretching it a little bit as I sew. So I'm just going to pin this straight across. I also want to point out there's a little bitty imperfection here on the fabric. It looks like... Um, I guess like a little bit of the uh, velvet is actually missing, like the furry part. So it's kind of like bald right there. So all I'm gonna do is actually just add more lace. So I have some lace going down over the hip um, because I'm just having so many problems with this dress and I'm just determined not to stop working on it and not to give up on it because 
this is how life goes um, when you are a designer. Like there's always going to be things that come up that's going to make you feel like quitting or deter you from finishing and you just have to basically push through it. I'm gonna make it work. All right, so I have these pins in here and then I'm going to turn it around and pin the other side. All right, so I kind of have my guide marked off with pins. And now, what you're basically gonna do is take your skirt and just wiggle it onto your sewing machine. Um, I'm gonna start in the center back. I always like to start the tool in the back when you're going in a circular motion because that's the best place to hide stuff if you have any type of mistake. And I'm gonna be sewing my tool on laying this way so that the rough edge is um, hidden. So basically the tool will just fall down and cover it. So here's my bolt and here's my tool fabric. It's 54 inches wide. So um, this piece is actually like 26 inches wide because it's doubled and I'm just going to fold it over like this. Now I have it double doubled and I'm going to lay it down here with about a half an inch over on this side and I'm just going to start sewing it down. And remember I said as I go, I'm going to try to stretch my velvet out. So that is, because this was intended to be a stretch dress, but I'm now sewing on a material that is not stretch. So I want to stretch the velvet out as I go, just to make sure there is some walking room for whatever client decides to buy this dress. Um, and I'm going to sew it down with a zigzag in case that helps with stretch as well. Oops. I'm going to go like um, just a few inches I'll go like just a few inches and then I will gather my fabric like so. And all I did, if you couldn't tell, all I'm doing is folding it over twice. And I'm still going to be stretching my velvet out as I sew. And then once I pass that gather, I'm going to sew a few more inches and then I'll do another gather. Remember, when you do the gather, you're just going to take your layers of tool and fold it over twice, give you a nice little poof to work with. Keep your velvet kind of stretched out to ensure you have walking room and keep sewing. that gather so another few inches and then make another gather I just want to say I don't know why people hate working with tool like I really love working with tool it's such a like free-flowing material and you don't even barely have to know what you're doing to make it look beautiful like that was my first like clothing project 
was a tool wedding dress and it's just so much fun to work with y'all gotta stop being scared to work with tool it's amazing Out a few inches and let me do one more inch or so and then I'll do another gather. Okay. Remember, so a few inches gather, so a few inches gather. Very simple. So It's a very like repetitive process. And what I'm gonna do once I get back around in a full circle, once I see that I'm coming up to the, the completion of my full circle, I'm gonna go down probably about three to five inches. Um, so I have some space in between rows and I'm just gonna keep going around until I've covered the whole entire skirt. All right, so I have now made a full circle. So I've come completely around my skirt one time and now I'm gonna be moving down few inches and going into my second row and once you get down past kind of that first row there's no need to um, continue to stretch your tool out because as it be with it being a mermaid skirt it's going to flare out anyways so there's going to be extra space anyway so just important to stretch it out on that first row
So this is how it's coming along. I'm not gonna record this whole entire thing from start to finish, cause I don't have storage on my phone like that, but um, I still have quite a ways to go. I haven't finished with the first bolt yet, so I'm just gonna keep going and update y'all in a little bit. Okay, so I have the dress laid out on the floor upside down so that y'all can see the inside of it. At this point, I have about five inches, maybe five to six inches of space left going all the way around the dress. So what I'm going to do now as I sew my last row is I'm going to do a double fold over where I'll be folding the fabric in to hem it. And on the other side, I'll be sewing my last row of tulle right there where that fold is so that I can have a nice uh, hem and no rough edges on the inside bottom of my dress.